Hello, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert, and welcome to American Humane in Action. As an animal lover, you may already know that American Humane is this country's very first national humane organization and has been fighting for the humane treatment of all animals since way back in 1877. Today, we are proud to say that we save, shelter, feed, and protect more than one billion animals around the world. Those in our homes, those who are caught in war, natural disasters, and cruelty cases, the animal actors we so love in movies and television, endangered species in zoos and aquariums, companion animals from pet providers, and hundreds of millions of animals living on farms and ranches. At American Humane, our mission is to help animals whenever and wherever they are in need. And you can help by learning to live a humane lifestyle. We often think it's impossible for one person to make a real difference, but by making humane choices in our day-to-day -day lives, we can create a dramatic impact on billions of animals around the globe. And we've made it easier to make humane choices by creating certification programs. In this episode, we'll explore several of our certification programs, including No Animals Were Harmed, American Humane Certified, and the new American Humane Pet Provider Seal of Approval. In the old days, animals and entertainment were often used as expendable props, put into danger without a second thought, just to get an exciting shot. In 1939, during the filming of Jesse James, a horse was run off a cliff for the cameras and died. The outrage this caused led American Humane to open an office in Hollywood to protect movie animals and treat them like the stars they really are. The now historic No Animals Were Harmed program today protects nearly 100,000 animal actors each year on film and TV sets around the globe and is the only industry-sanctioned effort to oversee animal safety in film productions. Dr. Tom Edling is our Chief Veterinary Officer and plays a vital role with No Animals Were Harmed. He joined us in studio to discuss this iconic program. Dr. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. I know there's so much that goes into protecting animal actors on film and television sets. Can you share with us some examples? Absolutely, Robin. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much that goes on pre-production, we get a script from the production company and look to see which animals are going to be used in the different scenes. Mm -hmm. We work in the, with the production companies uh, before anything even happens to make sure that the animals can be safe during those scenes. Mm -hmm. Then during the production, we're there on set with our certified animal safety representatives. They're watching everything. They're making sure the animals are safe. They even are, are uh, watching to make sure when the animals are off the set, that they're in a nice, comfortable location. They have food and water, usually air conditioning. Oh. Um, make sure they don't work too many hours. Um, I, our, do they work as many hours as the humans? Oh, no, not at all. No? no? Oh, I love this. So our animal stars really do have a great job when they're on film and television sets. They have a great sets. job. They do, yes. Yes. Can you share with me a little bit about a certified animal safety rep's role in film and television? You bet. First off, they go through extensive training, multiple weeks of training. Mm -hmm. They're on set with uh, other representatives to make sure that they understand exactly what's going on. They're there every second of the time when an animal's on the set. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these people are veterinarians. They all have extensive animal backgrounds. They're really the true professionals in the field. That's amazing. What kind of skills do they have when you say they're a professional in the field? Because I know many of our viewers might want to grow up and be a certified animal safety rep. So what would it take for you to hire a certified animal safety representative for no animals were harmed? You know, they have to have an extensive background before. Most of them have some sort of a training in either um, they've worked in zoos or they've worked as an animal trainer. Mm -hmm. They all have an extensive background. Then we take them through very long training. The main thing they really need to do is be uh, very good at observing what's going on on the set. Mm -hmm. They need to see everything because on sets, a lot of times there's downtime, but we have to yes. make sure that every second of every day they're watching. A lot of times things change on a set. You mm -hmm. know, the director says, I want to do something a little bit different. That's normal. Mm -hmm. And they're there to make sure that that different change is still safe for the animal. I have a question that I always get asked. Is it safe for an animal actor to work in film and entertainment? It is, especially if American Humane is on that set. We make sure that animal is protected, absolutely. We are their animal advocate. We're their voice. We're their voice, yes. I understand there's a very extensive set of on-set rules 
that a scientific advisory committee creates in consultation with you and your expertise to protect those animal stars. Can you share with us a few examples of what's in an onset guide? You bet, we have that 132 page guide. Mm -hmm. In that guide, it goes through every animal species, what they can and can't do. Let's say we have birds on the set, they're not allowed to have any smoke or any fog or anything like that. In fact, the smoke and the fog, anything that touches the animal, cosmetics, costume, we review first. We look at the material safety data sheets to make sure it's okay for an animal to be there. Um, so very extensive background before the animals are even thought about being on the set. Dr. Tom, there's so many Western movies out now. All of it is this sort of incredible horse action in particular. Tell us, what do you do to keep horses safe uh, in these incredible new Westerns that we're seeing? Yeah, and that's a great big part of our job too. Mm -hmm. You know, horses, they, a lot of times it shows the horses running along and all of a sudden they'll trip and they'll fall. Yes. That doesn't really happen in real life. What happens is the horse might be running, but then in a totally separate take, the animal will be standing and it'll roll over on its own. They're trained to roll over. They're not running. We don't allow that. They just roll over on their own. And there's usually a big pad that they fall on. But when the movie magic comes into the play, then they bring in, they bring in computer effects. They bring in effects that they can do afterwards and they put it all together and it looks like the horse is running along and fell. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen it that did way. It did not happen. It's no. Hollywood movie magic. It is, yes. It and is. the animal star is safe from harm. Animals are absolutely safe, yes. Wonderful. You know, our American Humane certified animal safety reps do so much to keep animal stars safe from harm. What can our viewers do to keep animals safe? You know, Robin, it, that's a great question. What they can do is make sure that the, that the movies and the productions they are seeing has our certification. They can wait at the end of the movie like I do with my wife mm -hmm. and see that certification at the end. Mm -hmm. They can also go to AmericanHumane.org and go to our website and see which movies have been certified. And Tom, they're looking for No Animals Were Harmed. No Animals Were Harmed, absolutely. In the making of this movie. Yes. That's wonderful. What does No Animals Were Harmed mean to you as our Chief Veterinarian Officer? It means that we are the advocate for the animals. Mm -hmm. They don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. It is our job, it is our duty to make sure that when an animal is used for entertainment purposes, there's no harm that comes at animal. Um, so it, it's, it's very personal. Very personal, it's also part of your moral compass, am I right? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. That's so proud to know you, Dr. Tom. It's great to be here, thank you, Robin. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna Oshkowitz. Since before the beginning of recorded time, animals have protected, comforted, sustained, and given us their unconditional love. It's time we repaid the favor. American Humane, the country's first national humane organization, encourages everyone who loves animals to do four simple things to help those who have helped us so much. Adopt from a local rescue or shelter. Help animals in disasters by becoming an American Humane rescue volunteer. Be sure to choose only humanely raised foods. And help preserve and protect Earth's wonderful, endangered, and rapidly disappearing creatures by supporting American Humane certified institutions. By doing these four simple things, you can make a world of difference for the animals who have done so much for us for so long. Visit AmericanHumane.org to find out how you can pay back in some small way the beautiful animals who enrich our lives every day. This is Sam, and he changed my life. If you're a veteran or know a veteran struggling with post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury, please go to AmericanHumane.org to learn about the Pups for Patriots service dog program. Hi, I'm Carson Kressley. Of all the most valuable resources in the world, kindness is the most precious. For more than 140 years, American Humane has been working to make the world a kinder place for animals. Rescuing those caught in disasters, protecting animals on our farms, on the silver screen, and the world's remarkable and endangered species who need our care to help them survive. All of us can make a difference by making humane choices at the supermarket, in our choice of entertainment, and by supporting conservation and rescue efforts. It's not hard at all. Make being kind a lifestyle choice and visit AmericanHumane.org for simple ways you can help build a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for animals and for all of us. Welcome back to American Humane in Action. 
Today, more than ever, people are conscious of where our food comes from. We not only want good, healthy food for ourselves and our families, we also want food that comes from farmers and ranchers who do things right and who care deeply about the well-being of their animals. Fortunately, an increasing number of farmers, ranchers, and food producers are deciding to improve and verify the welfare of their animals in their care by becoming American Humane Certified. For nearly 150 years, we've been working to protect and advance the care of animals in agriculture. And today, we run the largest and most trusted certification program overseeing their treatment. We now oversee the welfare of more than one billion chickens, cows, pigs, ducks, turkeys, and more. In fact, 90% of all cage-free eggs in the United States are American Humane Certified. Greg Herbrook is the CEO of Herbrook's, which is one of the country's leading egg production companies. Since 1958, Herbrook's has embraced their mission of serve the bird and has been an American Humane Certified producer since 2008. He joined us in studio to discuss humane farming and why it's important to him and his family operation. Greg, thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. You know, today we're talking about the humane lifestyle, one of my favorite topics, because I live a humane life and I know you do too. Absolutely. You know, I think what's so important to me, and I think you share this value with your family and your family-owned company. Mm -hmm. What are you, third generation with two more right behind you? Yes, third generation egg farmer and uh, next gen coming along and uh, hopefully a, a fifth generation. You know, one thing that's so important, I believe, to consumers to your customers, to mm -hmm. uh, friends who celebrate the values of American Humane, is that there is an American Humane certified program for mm -hmm. eggs. Can you share with us what that means to be American Humane certified? It is very much a part of our program, a partnership of how we market eggs. Mm -hmm. It is an in-depth review of our care of animals. It is starts with an application process where mm -hmm. we apply for these specific facilities and the design and all the specs of those. Mm -hmm. um, and then the audit visit comes. There's much about biosecurity as that's very important. Very much so. Uh, then there's the walkthrough of the facility, which I believe is, is the most um, engaging part of our, uh, the audit process because right. the American Humane auditors, they get chickens and they, there's a knowledge base and an understanding as we explain what we do to care for this hen, they get it and can relay that into the audit. You know, we talk about being American Humane Certified involves an audit process with guidelines that American Humane certifies that is, this is what it is to be humane. Mm -hmm. But that audit is rooted in solid science, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's so much a part of who we are as a company and as a family. Mm -hmm. The serve the bird culture mm -hmm. um, is when you're tr constantly trying to improve the, well, the lifestyle and the welfare of, of our hens, mm -hmm. science is very much a part of that. Be it the nutrition, yes. be it the, the vaccination or the health programs, the living system, exactly. There's many a things is, so we can fit the behavioral needs of our hens right. within our system and then verify it through our audit. So very important, again, rooted in solid science. Mm -hmm. And I know your family motto is serve the bird. Tell me what serve the bird means. Serve the bird is a culmination from my grandfather and father's generation into ours. And that is, as a family, we put the bird up on a pedestal. Whatever's the best for that bird to thrive in our environment, mm -hmm. we want to do for it. So the entire decision process of how do we design a building for that? How do we Get what's the nutrition? How how many people care for them, and how do we train them? Very important. Um, training is absolutely part of that's part of the audit as well as the training mm -hmm. to verify that anyone caring for our hands, if it's not me, is doing it the way I would do it. That's beautiful. You know, I love the fact again, family-owned business. Your third generation, two more generations coming uh, in the future, mm -hmm. uh, and what you really celebrate is the hen. You celebrate serve the bird, but you do so with what's called cage free. And I know many of us who celebrate being in a humane lifestyle, think about cage free eggs. Mm -hmm. So please tell me what is cage free for those of us who want to celebrate a humane lifestyle? Well, cage free is a very much a trend and a change that's happening in the United States. Many of the customer base has asked us to convert from a cage system 
to a cage free. So cage, it's huge, right? It's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, about 70% of the marketplace has made a commitment to source eggs from cage free environments. We're wow. uh, by most of them by 2025. So there's a there is a Three years away. there's a tanker turn going on in our industry of of switching facilities over. Uh, so a cage free environment is where the bird, it, I'll, I'll contrast it to a cage. When you leave at five o'clock in a caged environment, you know where those birds are gonna be tomorrow. Yes. In a cage-free environment, the birds are free roaming, they have access horizontally and vertically, so they can go up and down and horizontally to the entire cubic footage of the building. Yes. And so uh, what you have to do is they're making decisions. They're, they're satisfying their natural behaviors, but they're also making decisions within that environment. So as a uh, caretaker of these hens, mm -hmm. we have to help them make good decisions. And I often use the comparison of if we don't teach them well, it's like having 100,000 13-year-olds making bad decisions <laughs> in a room. So uh, very much uh, it is geared towards how they use that space. And a lot of that is in the design. You know, I understand that you've made a family choice here to be American Humane Certified, to have cage-free production mm -hmm. on your facilities. But 90% of producers don't do this. Well, they certainly should. Mm -hmm. uh, as our industry converts from a caged environment to a cage free, mm -hmm. um, based on the marketplace demand, mm -hmm. roughly 70% of the market, mm -hmm. mostly the retail and a lot of the food service, has made a commitment by 2025 to source eggs only from cage free production. Well, Greg, I want to make sure I heard this right. By 2025, 70% of the market will be cage free? That's the commitments from the marketplace, primarily retail, but a lot of food service has mm -hmm. said they will source only eggs from cage free production by 2025. Our company has been headlong. We have just under 10 million hens, about 90% of them are cage free today. That's stunning, so you're already there. We're already there. We had seen that, we hadn't built a cage since mm -hmm. 2003 or four because we could see this potentially coming. So we focused on learning how to produce eggs in this cage-free environment right. and offering it to our customers. And many have engaged already and already offer a large portion of their market. Greg, Herbrooks has been certified since 2008, which is wonderful. Thank you for that, by mm -hmm. the way. Where do you see the biggest value and certainly the biggest impact? Well, certainly the value is to help us get better at what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have definitely a culture of constant improvement. Mm -hmm. The high standard that mm -hmm. uh, we work to uh, produce too, mm -hmm. that American Humane sets, is certainly what gets us uh, up in the morning and helps us keep wanting to do it better every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, the end impact is for our, cons our consumer, mm -hmm. their authentication and validation of our process is affirmed by American Humane. Thank you, Greg, for being with us today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Right after the break, we'll dive into American Humane's exciting new certification program for pet providers. We'll be right back. Every year, 30,000 elephants are killed by poachers. Eight million tons of plastic is dumped into the ocean. And 18 million acres of forest disappear. And with them, many of the remarkable animals that share our planet. These animals need our help. Their very survival depends on our ability to protect them. Zoos and aquariums are on the front lines of wildlife conservation and inspire environmental stewardship amongst the millions of families that visit every year. And know that zoos and aquariums that have earned the Humane Certified Seal of Approval from American Humane will not give up until every species has a fighting chance for survival. Find out more and help protect and preserve the amazing creatures that share our world. Hi, I'm Vivica Fox. For more than 100 years, American Humane has been helping our best friends in their worst times, during hurricanes, tornadoes, and increasingly, wildfires. They're real heroes to these animals. But Mother Nature isn't the only danger that animals face. Sometimes it's human nature that's the greatest threat. Each year, 
more than six million beautiful adoptable animals are being abandoned and more than a million are euthanized before they can be rescued. These animals need heroes too. Heroes to open up their hearts and homes and to give them the love they deserve. Be a hero to an animal in need. Consider becoming an American Humane Rescue Volunteer or adopt from your local shelter. Visit AmericanHumane.org to find out how you can be a hero and help our best friends in their worst times. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass and this is Chip. For more than 100 years, American Humane has been on the front lines protecting animals in times of crisis. From Pearl Harbor to 9-11, the California wildfires and the coronavirus pandemic, American Humane Rescue has provided life-saving assistance for animals in virtually every major national disaster. If you're anything like me, your pets mean the world to you. And if disaster strikes, you want to keep them safe. To prepare for an oncoming disaster, ensure your pet has secure and up-to-date identification. And if you must evacuate, remember to take your disaster preparedness kit with you. To learn more about disaster planning and how to keep your best friends safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. Thank you for watching American Humane in Action. Millions of Americans welcome new pet family members into their homes every day. And we're not talking just puppies and kittens. Nearly 29 million American households have embraced non-traditional small animals like guinea pigs, birds, frogs, fish, and snakes as pets, which is just one of the many reasons we created the American Humane Certified Pet Provider Program. This program focuses on assessing the condition, well-being, and welfare of these small animals at pet provider locations and animal suppliers across the country. Dr. Amy Wren is American Humane's National Director of Special Projects, and she spearheads our pet provider certification. She joined me in studio to share why consumers can be confident that when they see the American Humane Certified Seal, they know the pets they're welcoming into their homes have received the highest level of care and attention. Welcome, Dr. Amy. So glad you're here today. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about the American Humane Certified Program? Yes. Mm -hmm. The American Humane Certified Program incorporates animal welfare standards and practices into a third-party audit program. So we're focused on assessing the condition, welfare, and well-being of animals. What this means is those brands that have the American Humane seal of approval prioritize animal welfare above everything else. Can you tell me what animals are impacted by this program? Because I see we have a cute guinea pig behind us who's adorable. Yes, so the pet provider program covers all the small pets that we think of when we are at our local pet care center. Mm -hmm. So everything from hamsters and gerbils to parakeets, conures. Of course, we have lizards, snakes, frogs, turtles, and a variety of fish and aquatic life that we can enjoy in our home aquariums. Dr. Amy, I understand there's a huge announcement regarding Petco. Can you share with us this news? Yes, we are so excited that recently Petco became American Humane's first pet provider, receiving our seal of approval for their excellent animal welfare. I just love that. So it makes me feel good going into a Petco store knowing that those animals have been humanely treated. They have. I love that. Dr. Amy, I understand this program is rooted in science and evidence-based practices. Can you share with us what that means? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we started by convening a group of scientists who have expertise in the animal welfare of all these types of species. Mm -hmm. We created animal welfare standards and an audit tool. Then we deployed American Humane auditors across the country traveling every day. They're inspecting not only Petco pet care centers, but mm -hmm. also their animal suppliers they have a very detailed checklist of indicators that they're looking for. So our team is out there looking at, do the animals have the proper housing and space? Do they have a veterinary care plan in place? Mm -hmm. Is their food and nutrition appropriate for their species? Are they being handled humanely? Do they have enrichment items to play and socialize and just be normal animals? That's wonderful and it's great as a pet parent knowing that I have some assurance that those animals have been humanely treated. And again, what determines what it is to be humane is determined by the latest science. Right. I love that. Dr. Amy, why does this certification matter for people looking to bring a new pet into their home? 
Well, more and more today, people are looking to make humane and ethical choices in their lives, mm -hmm. and that includes how and where to adopt their new best friend. With the increase in pet ownership, there's a spotlight on welfare expectations. So people are looking for pet providers who have a trusted oversight program like American Humane. So people can feel good when they see the American Humane seal of approval that their small pet has been raised humanely under science-based animal welfare standards. I have to ask you though, what's the future for this certified program? Well, we're hoping this is a watershed moment in the pet industry. Mm -hmm. This innovative program that American Humane has created is going to be rolled out to all types of pet providers. So anyone bringing a pet home can feel good that their animal has been raised humanely. How about grooming? Grooming as well. Grooming is an amazing opportunity to ensure, again, that animals are being treated humanely and safely. We're hoping to continue to expand into more and more areas for animal care. My Daisy and Mr. Darcy will be so grateful that they'll be able to go one day to an American Humane Certified Dog Groomer. Yes, they will look beautiful. Well, Dr. Amy, I was so thrilled to see that American Humane and Petco joined forces to create a ban on the use of shock collars in dog training. Yes, it's a wonderful step forward. These tools are incredibly inhumane to use on our best friends. And they are our best friends and we love them and they love us unconditionally. Which brings me to this very important question. Will American Humane create a certification program for dog training in addition to what we've done for pet providers? Absolutely. There's so many opportunities for us to use positive training and help uplift trainers who practice this kind of treatment. Our dogs deserve the absolute best. Thank you so much, Dr. Amy, for your leadership in this very important space. And I know as a pet parent, we're all grateful for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Robin. We can all play a part in improving the way so many animals live by making humane choices at the supermarket, at restaurants like Taco Bell and Chipotle that offer American Humane certified proteins, and by setting a humane table year round. You'll be eating well and doing good. If you were inspired by the show, join us and the compassion movement by supporting American Humane and its work to save, shelter, feed, and protect more than one billion animals every year. And please visit AmericanHumane.org. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can keep you up to date on all the latest news about the beautiful animals who share our world. I'm Dr. Robin Gansert. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll tune into all of our episodes of American Humane in Action for an inside look at the innovative efforts that are building a better, more humane world for all of us.